Honestly, that's going to be very boring to showcase. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech and today we're talking about motion sensors from IKEA Trat3. Now, that wouldn't be a very long video uh, because it takes about two seconds to hook it up and receive the information that you can pass over to the light behind me to make it work on and off again. So I thought, how about I'm gonna make something much more smarter and I came up with this. Now, yes, that's an IKEA sensor which can be basically controlled via Node-RED and I introduced a bunch of new options. Now, if you flip the sensor on its back, you'll see that uh, you have only two dials that you can control. There is a one for operation at night and during the day and there is a one with a timer up to 10 minutes and that's not really impressive. I'll show you a showcase and then uh, we're gonna jump into the node red and I promise it's not going to be a two second video for that. <laughs> so let's get started. This is motion sensor from IKEA and on its own it's not really smart. I mean I can turn the light on just move by moving in front of it but that's pretty much everything. However I figure out how to make it a little bit smarter. This is a very boring way of controlling motion sensors. You can either trigger it by day and night, or by night only, and trigger it up to 10 minutes. Now I can integrate the motion sensor with Node-RED, and this way I can make custom behaviors. So I can enable latching, I have a timeout which spans more than 10 minutes, I've set it out up to 60, and also I can even trigger the lights with a couple of minutes of delay. Now I can operate it by day, night or 24 hours a day. And if I don't like any settings, just reset it. Because it's a Node-RED dashboard, I can control behavior of my sensor from anywhere in the world. Before we start, please set the motion sensor to day mode and the minimum timeout, which is one minute. This is IKEA motion sensor uh, dashboard from Node-RED and you can see a couple of different user interface elements in here. First of all, we're going to focus on those three buttons and mostly because they use one of my previous pro projects in Node-RED and that project was to get the sun information using your geographical coordinates. You could get your sunset and sunrise information based on that you could get uh, to know whether we are talking about uh, um, day or night time. So as you can see it's daytime right now, it's before the sunset in here. So since I'm using that, uh, I'm going to link it for you so you would be able to replicate it and learn how this is done. So let's jump into the Node Red Motion Sensor Flow. And as, as you can see, this is a little bit more complicated than would have been otherwise. And I spent a couple of good hours trying to figure out everything around. So uh, since I've mentioned the buttons, let's talk about the buttons and the user interface a little bit more. In here, I have those three buttons, which each submits a different kind of payload and it's set to different kind of topic as well. Now these are being sent to my um, function node, which basically in here submits three different uh, colors for background. So the buttons could have a different colors and changes. So as you can see, this is what it does in here. And also it sets a fourth payload, which is a message sent by uh, these buttons, so one button sends day, one sends night, one sends uh, 24 hours. Now that's being uh, referred over to a next uh, function node and I'm using that previous project to get the time of the day and that time of the day has two values either day or night. So if I obtain the variable uh, from that uh, local flow from 24 7 uh, um, using those buttons then I can compare it and then if that's uh, it's correct the day and the day is correct and I set the flow variable called day to true uh, if it sets to 24 hours it's true as well and if it doesn't match then it's set to false now this is something I check every minute and I use that with this update node and that triggers it every minute and that flow variable is basically used here to interrupt the flow. So you can see the flow day, it's only passing uh, messages over if this is set 
to true. Otherwise, it will stop IKEA messages from passing over further. Now, IKEA sensor uh, sends two kind of messages for occupancy. It's either uh, true or false, and they store it payload.occupancy. And I, I'm only interested in the true messages. I don't, I'm not interested in the timeout itself because they're gonna send the timeout programmatically. There is another stopping node, which is exactly uh, working exactly similar uh, way as the one responsible for the A. And this is a latching. Latching means that if I have multiple triggers, only the first trigger is going to go through and the other triggers won't pass over until this is reset. So this is why I'm using it here. And uh, last after this, I can start calculating stuff. So I'm taking all the user inputs in here, which are already set in flow variables. These user inputs basically come from these uh, nodes. So you have your uh, timeout, you have your delay, you have your latch, and those are being saved to uh, flow variables with this function node. So I'm collecting different topic for each uh, element and uh, different, each topic has a different payload as well. And based if it's a latch submitting it, I'm basically setting correct latch function. If it's false, it's opposite and this is the controlling latch from here. If it's the topic from the delay slider, I'm setting the delay to be multiplied by 60 because uh, I want that in minutes rather than seconds. And then I set the delay uh, flow variable. And if it's a timeout, then the same. I set it to minutes and I set a variable uh, flow variable to respective value. Now, speaking of this, I've got another two things. Template is just a picture that you've seen in here on the top. So that's the template node. And I have an IKEA reset button. So when I press it, there's several things that's going to be reset. First of all, I'm going to submit uh, these sets of five different messages to uh, do the following. This one's going to reset uh, set the uh, timeout to one minute. This one's going to set to uh, slider, the delay slider to zero. Um, this one's gonna set the latch to false. This one's gonna issue the notification that reset has been complete. And this one's gonna turn off the light. I'm uh, also gonna zero other flow variables just to make sure they, uh, the values are correct. And that's what happens with, with these. This is a, just a confirmation uh, of the message when you reset. So you can see it in the corner here. Now, when the values are obtained, what I'm doing next is I'm setting a new time. So I'm checking what time is now and then based on the following, I'm going to match a couple of things. So if delay and timeout are set, if they're not set, I'm going to set them to zero and then set the values to zeros. Uh, timeout minimum is one because with zero, it's going to have the same timeout as the starting. So uh, I'm adding one minute as a default and then I can set the timers. So if I have any delay value, that delay value is being added to my time value, current time, and I know what time uh, the sensor should activate. So that's gonna be your time from now plus the delay specified by slider. Same with the timeout. So I would know when to switch the um, light associated with motion sensor off. I'm gonna add current time timeout value but also delay as well because I don't want that uh, sensor all value to be smaller than sensor on. Now lastly I've got latching behavior so if the latch is true I'm making sure that the latch is uh, false and if latching is disabled that the latch is true so the messages could flow through here. Now you can see there is another uh, switch mode which basically check the state. State means whether the alarm or the has been activated or not because I only want this information from the set set on sensor to trigger the check timers only once. Once the check timers triggers it that turns positive and it's no longer passing any information from this side. You know, keep updating stuff relevant within that node. Check for timers. Basically what it does is trigger every minute and every minute I check whether I should turn on or turn off my spotlight. Now to turn it off I have um, this message basically I set the Zigbee topic, I set the payload and I clear the variables. Uh, to turn it on all I have to do is just uh, set the correct topic and pass the payload that's all it is and then checking timers which controls this and it's taking the information about sensor on, sensor off and the current state 
And then what it does is basically takes a new time with extra seconds. So the time would be ahead of the sensor on. And then according to those two conditions, gonna check whether all the conditions, so your time now, it's bigger than the sensor start and uh, the sensor start isn't at zero, so it wasn't reset and the start is false. Then it's gonna set the spotlight to true, which activates the light. And it uh, basically tells the system that right now the address, the alarm has been set. And completely opposite uh, situation when it's time to uh, turn everything off. The time now has to be bigger than the uh, sensor off and then it turns everything off. And that's basically, uh, that's basically done. That's your controller for IKEA motion sensor. I surely know how to make the motion sensor from IKEA much more complicated. Now, if you want to get some more details about what I've just discussed, uh, in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to an article which contains basically everything you need to know, plus the files to download. Uh, now, I don't have a posting schedule, so if you want to get updated when, uh, when I've got a new content, either follow me on social media, or enable the YouTube notification button and subscribe to my channel for that. As for now, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're going to come up with some cool uses for that uh, IKEA motion sensor. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.